Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are once again in orbit of Mars. This is our uh, crewed Martian lander, and it is uh, about to start making its approach to Harmonia Station after doing about a billion passes of uh, high atmosphere aero braking, uh, of which I have gracefully spared you the tedium of having to watch. Uh, we did separate part of that fairing shell to uh, help me balance some fuel load and just uh, make sure everything on the inside was working and I wanted it to uh, jettison into the atmosphere and uh, deorbit itself. Anyway, here's our braking burn coming into Harmonia at a uh, very reasonable close distance. We we're only using two of our uh, lunar module descent engines uh, and I did do another burn on uh, a pair of those engines to uh, put us on course for this encounter. So basically we have two engines that have four ignitions remaining and another two engines that have three ignitions remaining, which uh, should still be enough to put us down on the surface of Mars. Uh, I mean, really, we should be able to do it with just uh, one solid ignition if we deorbit using RCS. Now that we know it really takes next to nothing to deorbit from this station, but uh, for timing purposes and uh, in hopes of accuracy, we'll probably use a, uh, a burn for that, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, we are about to start making our approach for docking, so we're going to uh, refuel that uh, top spare fuel tank there. Uh, this does help us with balance. Now the other issue that I'm having here was with design. You see we only have two of those uh, quad thrusters instead of four. So we really only have roll control and um, uh, pitch and yaw control across two axis instead of four, which would have greatly aided this uh, docking measure. But uh, I think we got it mostly lined up here on approach, uh, all thruster discrepancies or not. But uh, yeah, we are off a little bit. So we are going to slow down, back it up, and try to just put these together a little more gently than last time. I'm also not willing to deal with a lot of the uh, craziness, but we're almost lined up. Just going to take some trading paint. But anyway, I'm going to turn you over to old me for uh, live commentary. Nice. All right. Well, we are uh, up to all of our parts. We're just short the Mars hopper, but that'll be here in like uh, less than a year or so. Uh, what we do want to do real quick is go in here and uh, lock the food, water, and oxygen. Might as well lock these two so I don't have to drain them off later. And, the, of course, the lithium hydroxide. We'll leave the electric charge unlocked because, man, we need to replenish that after all that flying when I forgot to uh, deploy the solar panels. Sweet! Uh, Harmonia Station, everyone, in all of its uh, landing preppy goodness. So... Yeah, I guess we'll get to some orbital operations, but uh, we're going to let the crew do some uh, work internally. We should actually double check. How's our science? We have 414. Let's transmit that home. Starting transmission. All right. Well, this is going to take a while. I'm going to hang out with it for a little bit. It doesn't mean you have to. So anyway, I will probably just go ahead and skip to the next morning. Just a few brief orbits later, we uh, rejoin Harmonia Station, and uh, we are now getting our trusty engineer out. This is uh, Nina Tesslerina. Tesslerina? Uh, yeah, it's probably decided not to pronounce that a long ass time ago. But uh, anyway, Nina has uh, quite a bit of work to do here on Harmonia Station before she can uh, take her ride along with uh, pilot Lee Bowman down to the surface in the Mars lander. Uh, basically, we brought a bunch of scientific equipment in these cargo pods uh, of the uh, Artemis IV, and uh, we're going to install them on our station module because it doesn't really have any scientific equipment on its own. Uh, last time it was relying on scientific equipment that was attached to the uh, first generation Mars lander and uh, really only packed minimal experiments of its own, uh, whereas we would like to uh, use this laboratory module to its greatest possible effect, so we've uh, packed in what experiments that we can. Um, so we've got the two of our small ones installed currently. Uh, we've got this, it is a biomapper, but it does also, it has two science experiments basically. It can image stuff from the surface as well as map it, so we will be using that for that, or this for that. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, this is also the only other engineer to do orbital construction work uh, outside of Boris, uh, who was here on last time uh, that we sent someone down to Mars. So I think Boris has had quite enough of this space station, and uh, really we want to give somebody else the chance to gain some experience in uh, doing these sort of things. And while I think I've got the uh, Kerbal Attachment System stuff pretty much figured out, there might have been a hiccup here or there, but uh, all in all it translates pretty well now, at least for these, uh, these few basic steps, although it is kind of irritating having to pack some of these experiments on our on our back and take them over one at a time, but, um, you know, I guess that's the uh, inconvenience that we're willing to pay. Anyway, we'll jump across the Artemis and uh, attend to our other container and uh, try to empty this thing out. These are all experiments that will fit very cleanly in our inventory. A few other things there, I don't really remember why I packed them along a... Uh, Short-range comms, a long-range comms, some lights, some KIS struts. There's, I don't really think things here really need to be strutted down. But uh, we do have two of these experiments here that are kind of atmospheric only. We've got the atmospheric detector. and We've also got the uh, sea seismic accelerometer, which can only be run on the surface. So I can think of no other place to put them, really, than uh, on the lander itself. So we'll just have her... Uh, grab hold of this ladder makes for a nice stable place to be while uh, using her trusty orbit rated DeWalt and anyway with all the uh, science experiments uh, installed she can go about cleaning up uh, some of the thrusters from the outside of the station uh, it'd be nice to reduce our part count uh, just even a little bit it does make uh, quite a difference actually so with uh, a full pack of thrusters, we'll jump back across to one of these crates and uh, drop them off. Which makes me realize I really don't need to take this stuff back to Earth with us. So I guess my thought right now is that maybe we should just remove the crates entirely and install them on the space station itself. That saves us the mass of having to move the crates around. And uh, at the same time, we'll save us the part count of having all of these uh, thrusters removed. And it is always really weird how the Kerbal shifts around when you put something in their inventory. I mean, I know it's basically accounting for the change of mass, but it doesn't ever get less weird. But uh, we're going to fill up those crates if we're not careful. So she's just going to uh, jump on board the lab and uh, open up Nina's, or uh, Catherine Richards' uh, inventory and give her these thrusters. And uh, we'll try to figure out what to do with them a bit later. Anyway, back out on EVA again with a freshly topped off EVA pack. We are certainly being a lot more careful with our fuel than before. This time we'll just have her grab the crate entirely and uh, strap that massive thing to her EVA suit and uh, carry it gracefully across the station. A very good view of Mars there, although it doesn't really look as good from this altitude as Earth does. And there we go, the crate has been uh, mounted securely to the end of the station, which uh, means the cleanup on the last couple of these thrusters is going to be extra easy, because it's uh, it's right there. I should have done that from the get-go, really. It would have been a much better first step than a seventh step. You know, live and learn or something. Oh, we'll clean up the last couple of these thrusters and go drop them off in this crate. Now, of course, we have to actually get rid of the other crate now, because we certainly can't uh, ditch one crate and cr keep another. I guess we should uh, put some of these KIS struts to good use. It does help uh, free up crate space. <laughs> she is uh, just super excited to be here, I guess. This would be kind of a fun job, float around in zero-G, although I would be absolutely terrified to be out on free-floating EVA, uh, not only this far from home, but this high up, and with very little recourse if something goes wrong. Anyway, we're going to utilize these KIS struts to secure this uh, very heavy life support module that kind of acts as the bridge between the lab and the uh, habitation module. And it is uh, a very nice opportunity to get some image of scale here with uh, absolutely how massive some of these structures are. 
They never seem that big when you're flying them around. Put a Kerbal outside next to them and yeah, suddenly it does go about changing your perspective a little bit. Anyway, uh, these crates do have to be mounted on a, um, I don't know, I guess like a central attach point. You can't just surface attach them. They have to be uh, centered. So good thing they automatically clip to that and we can get this second crate bolted in without any real issue. So we'll uh, finish cleaning up uh, this comm that we don't need in one last thruster, which does remind me that uh, we uh, snapped off a communications antenna on the lander on our her first pass through the atmosphere during uh, aero capture. So we'll just go ahead and reinstall this one over here where we might be able to get some use out of it. They, after all, might want to radio home at some point during uh, their excursion to the surface. It will drop off this last thruster. We probably don't need this EVA propellant either. We can leave it here on the station with tools and then uh, she can just hop right back in having completed her uh, task for the day. So that leaves us cleared for landing, everyone. So that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.